Alright, hi guys, welcome back to another video from e Level Lessons Online. Okay, we're back with physical geography today, we're going to be covering on our next part of physical geography. Okay, it is also a rather tricky part of your syllabus. It is none other than the Aeolian landscape. Okay, this is a follow up after CAS. Okay, except that Aeolian shares very, very different um, landforms and properties as compared to your CAS landscape. So, I highly recommend that you. Um, go through this whole series with me as well Okay, from part 1 to most likely part 4 or 5 I think I'm most likely doing part 4 Okay, we're going to start off today's video with the Aeolian landscape and factors It is basically going to be an introductory lesson to what the Aeolian landscape is After which, your second part will go through your processes So things like your Aeolian erosion, Aeolian transportation and deposition And lastly, my final part will cover the most important part Which is going to be your Aeolian landforms Okay all of the links, I'll leave it up uh, or down there in the comment section below as well. It will take a while for my videos to upload, so I'll mostly have it out by maybe this Sunday if possible. But be sure to stay tuned for it because um, I know it's quite a tricky topic as well. In fact, I feel it's harder than your cast. Okay, so let's go straight into your first part of this series. The Aeolian Landscape. Okay, the Aeolian Landscape by definition okay, is an area which lacks available moisture so for instance your desert is a very clear example okay it lacks available moisture as well as has a very high rate of evapotranspiration and higher diurnal temperature okay basically your daily fluctuations in temperature is very very huge okay so this usually tends to be your tropical deserts it is very very classic of a tropical desert right okay you just go back to um i think it was lesson four or something like that it was on your copen climates okay you would understand that tropical deserts, your BWH climate has actually extremely high diurnal temperature. Why? Because during the day, it's extremely hot and at night, it's extremely cold due to the lack of cloud cover. So, the Aeolian landscape actually is, if, is being favoured by such conditions whereby with a lack of rainfall and high temperature, it is very, very classic of an Aeolian landscape to form, which is why you've got things like your sand dunes which we'll cover in our last part. Okay, so there are five main types of arid landscapes. This is just for your info. You do need to know it for your exam. Not really, but it has a possibility of coming out for your case studies. Okay, first you have got the Hamada. So Hamada is basically your barren rocky highlands. So it's basically the very rough, very coarse rocky highlands. Okay, you have got the Rag. Okay, Rag is basically your vast stony plain. So it's basically a huge place whereby it's just... Um, and it's just sparse. It's just that it's just um uh, stones. Then you have got your earth. So your earth is basically your sand sea. So it's essentially similar. Okay, it's a huge plot of land whereby it's all basically sand. You have got mountainous areas. This one uh, is featured like in all other areas as well. Mountains. Okay, and lastly you have got intermontane basins, which are basically kind of like inter drainage basins with salt lakes. You don't really need to know this because it's, uh, it's, it's more of an extra thing. So I just want to cover it because um, it is part of your five types of arid landscapes. Okay. So this is just certain examples. Okay, Hamada, like we just mentioned previously, okay, it's your rocky highlands, right? So Hamada looks something like this. It's extremely rocky. I think it's almost impossible or impractical to actually walk around here. Okay, you've got your Ur, which is basically your vast stony plains, right? Your Ur. Um, oh no, sorry, your sand seas, yeah. So you notice it's a lot like sand, sand particles everywhere. Okay, the stony um, part is your rack, okay, which is basically, you can see a bit of stones, okay, it's like kind of like pebbles, small, small little stones. Okay, your intermountain basins is look, looks like this. Okay, it looks a lot like the one you have in US. Okay, um, if you've seen any any of those kind of um, um, alien structures in the America. Okay. So, the Aeolian landscape, just to take note, okay, is that in rocky areas, okay, such as just now, oops, sorry about that, okay, like we covered your um, Hamada, right, in rocky areas, the main wearing agent tends to be water, okay, water erosion is what produces this um, type of an um, Aeolian land landscape, as for um, sandy areas, which is like your sandy seas, your um, uh, right, uh, for example, your uh, ERG, right? Your sandy seas, right? It's basically um, tends to be eroded um, or weathered by wind instead. Okay, we should go through later on. Okay, so what are the factors, okay? What are the um, factors that may affect your shape of your arid landforms, okay? Um, it's not exactly processes, okay? 
take note that this part is wrong. He possesses is more of erosion, transportation, deposition, which I'll go through in the next part, which I'll link in the top right hand corner of the screen. You can go and check it out if you want. Um, I recommend you check it out. But basically, these are the factors that affect um, whether your processes even come about. Okay, as well as how your landforms, your arid landforms may actually shape and form. So, it's basically back to similar um, to our cast one. Okay, whereby you have got internal and external factors. In this case, internal factors, you have got your joints and bedding planes. So, like your strata, right? Your geologic structure. Okay, and then for external factors, you have got climate, which is consisting of your rainfall as well as temperature. So you have got rain, fall, and temperature. And then next, you have got vegetation cover. So vegetation co cover is also similar okay, to your cast one, whereby your vegetation can bring in acidity, can bring about chemical weathering. Um, all that kind of good stuff. Okay, and lastly, I also want to cover in this one, which should be your physical and chemical editing because they play an important role as well, mainly your physical, okay? Why? As we have covered before in our physical weathering lecture, okay, you can check the top right hand corner of the screen, I'll link it up there as well. Okay, our physical weathering um, lesson, we actually went through that um, very, very hot weathers, right? High temperatures, high diurnal temperatures favor physical weathering a lot. Okay, chemical weathering will be less dominant because why there is a lack of rainfall. Hence, carbonation solution is actually very hard for it to take place, which is why you notice that cast landscapes do not form in deserts, whereas it is actually another type of landscape called your Ionian landscape. Okay, so your exam requirements, very, very straightforward for this first part. Okay, honestly, this episode I didn't really cover much. Okay, like I mentioned in this previous slide, right? Your factors are only covered in depth in your part 3 and 4, which is on your landform. So I want to be very, very landform specific with your factors so that you are very clear how you can apply your factors in the different landforms because that is how you will be structuring your essay based on landforms instead. Okay, exam requirements, you just need to very simply understand the different factors that I've just mentioned. So things like your climate, your rock structure, your vegetation cover, physical and chemical weathering, those can be internal factors as well. You need to know them and you must be able to explain them because why? We will be throwing these explanations into your um, formation of landforms which will be covered in part 3 and 4. Okay, and then next part, I'll actually be going through your processes such as erosion, transportation and deposition. So make sure you um, stay tuned for that part. I'll most likely link it up in the top hand corner of the screen as well. Go click on it, check it out. You must watch it because it is very, very important. Okay, it is the lead up to your final part of this chapter which is your alien landforms which is likely the main essay question that will be coming out um, in, in the event that Aeolian does come out for team 1.2. Okay, so if not, um, that's all I have for this video. I hope you did enjoy it. It's a very, very shorter, much shorter video than the rest. Okay, but trust me, the next few, few parts, okay, part 2, part 3, part 4, will be very intense, more fun, and definitely much more useful as well. Okay, so if you did enjoy this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Okay, make sure you do subscribe to the channel because it does help me out a lot. And do let me know if you need any help in any other topics and I'll be sure to cover them based on your requests. Okay, so if not, without further ado, I'll see you guys in the next part. Stay tuned for it. Click it at the end of this video if it shows up. And I'll see you guys then. Bye-bye.